I've, I was the press speaker here, uh, one of them. Um, and uh, I also did some workshops on the critical mass and about feminism uh, in general. I've been presenting a workshop uh, on feminism uh, because I've uh, noticed that even in uh, our movement, in the leftist movement and in the ecological movement, feminism is, has become a taboo or something that is not known and uh, therefore maybe not loved or respected. Um, so I thought it would be very useful to uh, present it again to a broader public, um, to, um, to talk about the, the myths uh, on feminism, but also, and that is very important to me, on why feminism is still very relevant today and why it, um, it's about all of us. So what are the myths? Well, oh, there are a lot of myths on feminism. Uh, people say that uh, they hate men. Um, that uh, they or or they it's very funny or they hate men or they want to become men it's one of both and I think already there there's something really going wrong because if you hate them why would you want to become them of course um, that's one of, of them uh, but also um, well the most I wouldn't even call it a myth the most um, uh, big idea that is um, very uh, a very problematic idea for feminism is that feminism is just not relevant anymore because of the second wave feminism that would have uh, dissolved every problem and uh, that the situation of women and the situation of men is approximately the same and uh, we just don't believe that is the case today. So why is it still irrelevant? Well it's still relevant first of all because um, there are many problems that are just crystal clear and that ha have to be uh, solved. Uh, one of them is that women still earn less for the same jobs than, than men today. The other one is that um, domestic violence is um, the first worldwide reason why women actually die. So when people try to make it a very marginalized in the house problem, no it's actually a political problem, it's out there and we need to do something about it. This week, actually next to the article of the climate camp, so that was kind of funny. Well, it's not at all actually. So it's an article on the fact that very, very few declarations of women that have been raped are being taken seriously by the police and that actually very few cases are actually um, uh, followed till the end. So uh, it's just a problem that has been marginalized while it's a problem that affects a lot of women and that should be actually out there to be solved. And if people even pretend it's not a big problem and if we still start pretending that rape is only a story about uh, a person you don't know jumping out of the bushes, which is um, not uh, very often the case. Rape is a problem uh, in our houses, in our families and uh, it should be seen as that. And um, I think it would be only normal for only m for also for men to feel um, appealed to this problem and to want to solve this problem together with women. So what kind of actions do you do to kind of get feminism to go? Forward? Well, um, the first thing uh, we really wanted to do was to um, show that feminism is still out there and that's why we, uh, um, cho uh, we've chosen the feminist barrio to be a specific barrio. Um, what I really loved about the camp this year was that feminism was really in the heads of people. For example, when a man would say something sexist, they would say, oh yeah, you're from the feminist barrio, right? So they would think about, oh, what, what did I just say? And do I actually agree with, I just, with what I just said? Also, the workshop about feminism has been done twice and there were a lot of men present and uh, really willing to understand what feminism is actually about. So they were really open-minded, as well as a lot of women who would first uh, explicitly say, no, I'm not a feminist. And then they would say like, oh yeah, maybe if that's what feminism is, maybe, yeah, it's important and I really want to be one of them. So that was uh, the most important thing. But of course, feminism is also relevant in the ecological and anti-capitalistic story we are trying to tell in the camp because one of the uh, things um, uh, that um, uh, women also really have to deal with is uh, over, -consum over consumption. So in, on, on the one hand, they're being objectified in publicity and on the other hand, publicity is really telling them how to look like, what to do, um, what to use, how to be, um, and even I would say how to think 
Um, and so with the feminist barrio, we also thought it would be very relevant to do some ad busting that was very specific anti-sexist ad busting. And again, a lot of men joined us in that, which I really appreciated. Um, and then, yeah, um, I think it was more, we really just wanted to, uh, for the story of feminism to be there, to be out. We also decided to put the information of the barrier actually in the plenary tent, so everybody would be able to read about it and ask questions about it. And uh, it actually happened because I had a, a lot of small talks that were actually on feminism with people I didn't know. So uh, yeah, I must say, uh, as a feminist, I'm really proud of uh, what we did in the camp. And um, I'm really proud of the people in the camp because it shows how open-minded they were in uh, contrast of the world. So. Are you very radical in your actions? Well, I don't like to call myself radical because I think if you want to um, to have the things you... I mean, what I want is freedom. What I want is not being forced to do things I, I don't think I should do. And I don't think that's a radical idea. I think uh, the system we're living is a, is a radical, radically oppressing system. And I think trying to stop that is not radical. It's just natural and normal and someone something every, everybody should do. So what we can do, what men can do, what women can do, what do you think? Like um, well, uh, of course, that's one of the of the huge challenges of feminism. Um, what is the position of men in feminism? It's a hard question and uh, it's something feminists really don't agree on. Um, I would say uh, to be a male feminist, you have to realize you're not a woman in, in the position of a woman. Uh, which is uh, very complex um, but if you if it, as a man you wonder what can I do for the feminist cause I would suggest you uh, study the step up step back um, um, position which means that uh, you would help um, women uh, bringing out the message they want to send by giving them the voices to bring out that message by realizing you have been part of a stronger voice that has been heard more and by lowering your voice to make uh, the voice of women higher. Well, harder, actually, <laughs> not higher. <laughs> and what's about the women, what they can do? Yeah. Um, first of all, it's important for women, I think, to realize feminism is not a story of our grandmothers and mothers. It's our story today. It's about our lives and how we should organize them. It's about uh, uh, enabling us and empowering us and seeing the differences in how we ha we are being treated in several ways and wondering how can I do something about that. I think uh, it's a very hard um, thing to do and I think that is why uh, a lot of women choose the more, uh, which appears to be the more comfortable positions position in the situation. Um, but still I would say we are there and uh, just look for other feminist groups, try to join them, um, read, it makes you stronger. Uh, nothing is as dangerous as a woman who reads. And um, uh, just, just do that and um, try to talk and think for yourself. Realize that the world you're living in is a designed world with rules that have been designed and everything that is designed can be redesigned.